I know you see a lot, a lot of these kind of videos to tell you that you're not alone, and I'm here, Wednesday, telling you that you aren't alone. And I hope that's comforting to know that you're not the only one suffering. I'm not undermining your problems. I'm not saying that, oh, there's other people suffering as well. Because there's a, there's there will always be someone who's better off than you and worse than you. And that's just the fact of life. And some common answers to some common statements, suicidal statements. I get um I get told that that someone feels like um that there's no reason to live. And guess what? Maybe there isn't any reason to live. I don't believe that there is any reason to live, but I'm still living. I mean, maybe we have to make our own reason, create our own reason. Maybe the reason will come to us in the end. Maybe the reason comes to us along the journey of life. Maybe it just never comes at all. Why does it matter? Why should that stop you from living? Why must you know everything in order to do it, or feel it? People, you don't always know why you feel certain things, but you feel them, right? Of course, asking about your reasons of living and why you're here can be rhetorical too. Hmm. And think about it, if, when you commit suicide, I mean if you commit suicide, and it happens a lot, it's just a fact of life, you are missing the chance to do a lot of things. Because when you commit suicide, you are taking away all future opportunities. And how are you supposed to know about these future opportunities or ever reach them if you don't continue living? That's not a guilt trip. I'm not trying to guilt trip you. It's just a rhetorical question. Sunsets, poetry, beaches. A lot of people like that cliched stuff. I like it too, I guess. And simple things are can and can be so beautiful. And even though the world is pretty ugly, you have abuse, rape, you have tons of things and general self-hatred. You just want to ask, why me? Why me? It's not that simple, you know? Know that you're not the only one feeling this way. And it won't ever be that way. So even though you feel lonely, that's not always the reality. Because you feel like no one cares, doesn't mean that no one cares. I care. A lot of people care. There will always be at least one person who cares. Why? Because it's also part of human nature. It's human nature to care about other people. It's human nature to aid other people. I may not know you that well, but if you come to me with a problem, I would like try to help you. I, I'm not a professional or anything, but I try, and I hope you try too. You, you see, I also get told that some people feel guilty for feeling suicidal and don't feel guilty for, I mean, of course you can feel guilty for being suicidal, but everyone feels it at least once, and just because you didn't go through this suffering or this certain type of suffering or you have a roof over your head doesn't mean you're not allowed to suffer. Suffering is suffering. Everyone feels it, right? Just because you cut yourself or feel suicidal over a bad score from a test, it, it's the same amount of pain as another person who's crying over 
grief or over family. I mean, that sounds kind of strange, but suffering is suffering. We suffer from different things. Me, when people pass away, when people die, I find it easier compared to people drifting away, but them not dying. It's just... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kind of rambling. And I always get told that some people think that no one loves them. And I, I just want to say, you don't need everyone or one person to love you to keep going. Even though love is important, it's not everything. I thought it was everything, but it's not. And even if someone else doesn't love you the way you want them to, you can always love yourself. There's beauty in that. There really is. Because when everyone rejects you, when you're left alone, you have yourself. So you need to learn to trust yourself. You need to learn that hurting yourself isn't the answer. And committing a suicide is the answer. If you think that you're gonna be happier after committing suicide, well, you won't because you're dead. Unless you f believe in an afterlife, that's another story, but I believe that um, if you believe that you'll be happier you won't feel this pain, you'll be dead, so how can you feel at all? You're not... You're not being selfish. I know a lot of people say so, and that's another thing to debate on. But you can't help what you feel. You can't suddenly want to, you can't suddenly magically disappear all the suicidal feelings. You can't. It doesn't work like that. So, suddenly doing drugs, being promiscuous, doing things to numb the pain, doing things to get your mind off suicide, won't always work. Because I've been there. I didn't do drugs, or I wasn't promiscuous or anything, but I did certain things to numb pain, suffering of other things. You have to keep holding on. Even if no one's holding on with you, even if no one's pulling you up, you can learn to stand on your two feet. You can. It, it could take years, but you can do it. Let no one tell you different. And I'll always be here to support you. I'm here with you every step of the way. I'll listen to your stories, your secrets, your little ramblings, whatever. Just know that I'm here and I care.